Welcome to our video, which will show you how to set up and carry out the GCSE Biology Required Practical on Antibiotic Resistance. In this practical, we'll be investigating the effects of antibiotics on bacterial growth using agar plates. For this practical, you'll need a Bunsen burner and heatproof mat, safety goggles, a nutrient agar plate, a bacterial culture, a sterile L-shaped spreader, and a sterile one mil syringe. You'll also need a permanent marker or china graph pencil, blank filter paper discs and a selection of antiseptics to test, or alternatively pre-impregnated antibiotic discs, a discard beaker of vercon disinfectant, some forceps, a roll of sellotape and scissors to cut, and it's also useful to have the vercon disinfectant in a spray bottle. Students need to prepare for the practical by putting on their safety glasses, tying back long hair, and then spraying down their working area with the Vercon disinfectant and wiping it dry with a paper towel. Your students would then light a Bunsen burner and leave it on the safety flame. And then it's very important that they thoroughly wash their hands with hand wash, not hand sanitizer, because that might contain alcohol and that would present a fire hazard with the flame of the Bunsen burner. Your students then collect their equipment, including the bacterial culture and the agar plate, and they position it close to the Bunsen burner. Your students then label the underside of the Petri dish containing the nutrient agar, making sure they write around the edge of the dish, and they need to put on there their initials or name, the date, their class to help the technicians when it comes to storing the dishes and also the culture that they've used in the dish. Your students then divide the base into three sections, numbering them one to three and place a dot in the middle of each section to show where they're going to place the antiseptic disc. Stress to your students the need to label the dish at this stage because once they've put the bacterial culture on the agar, they can't then turn the Petri dish back over again. What I've done here is use the original culture to produce a subculture by growing it in a nutrient broth. So using the subculture, your students hold the bottle in one hand and take the lid off with the same hand, but it's really important they don't put the lid on the desk where it could pick up some bacteria. So we then turn the Bunsen burner to the blue flame and flame the neck of the bottle, making sure we're twisting it. Then using the sterile syringe, we draw up one milliliter of the culture, flame the neck of the bottle again by twisting it in the blue Bunsen burner flame, then replace the lid, and now the bottle can be placed back on the bench. It's important that your students work close to the Bunsen burner at all times so that the convection currents can carry away any bacteria that they may be breathing out. They then lift the lid of the Petri dish slightly and using the syringe, they discharge it into the Petri dish and then they discard the syringe into the Vercon solution, making sure they fill up the syringe with the solution and then discharge it again and they can leave it in that solution. Still working close to the Bunsen burner, your students then take one of the sterile L-shaped spreaders and they lift the lid of the Petri dish slightly and they spread the bacterial culture that you've just placed onto the nutrient agar. The L-shaped spreader then goes into the pot of the Vercon along with the syringe that's been used. Your students then use a pair of forceps to take one of the discs that's been soaked in one of the antibiotics. And this one I've got here is penicillin. And they lift the lid of the Petri dish slightly, place it onto one of the three areas on the dot that they've got, and they press it down slightly to ensure contact with the nutrient agar. They then replace the lid and they repeat it with two other types of antibiotic. Your students then use two pieces of sticky tape to secure the lid of the Petri dish. Put one on each side, it's very important we do it this way so that it can allow oxygen into the dish. We don't want to create anaerobic conditions because that's more likely to encourage the growth of pathogenic bacteria. 
The agar plates are then collected by the technician to incubate for 48 hours at 25 degrees C. We keep it below body temperature so we don't accidentally grow pathogenic bacteria. Your students can then clean down their working area and wash their hands thoroughly with hot water and antibacterial soap. We hope you found our practical advice useful. For expert technical support, please contact the Philip Harris Technical Support Team on tech support at philipharris.co.uk or visit our blog at philipharris.co.uk forward slash blog.